Hi, it's Rebecca. Um, have you ever heard of remote viewing? A lot of you have, but do you know how it works? It's fascinating because it um, allows us to see things in the future even before they happen in the three-dimensional world. And um, because I teach the work of Jose Silva, and I did for many years, starting back in 2004, we teach remote viewing. That's part of the training. Um, we're able to get the name, the age, and the place that a person lives in called the subject. And once you learn how to get down to your alpha level of consciousness on command, you can do that after you've um, been doing that for about two days, you automatically can go there. We call it going to center. And you're able to actually see with your inner mind the condition someone is in. You might even see what they look like. Um, you can check out their bodies to see what their health condition is. And then you can heal them if you want to. That's remote viewing. There are other types of remote viewing. Um, I've met people whose friends are so psychic and developed that um, they're used by the police every now and then when they have a case they can't crack. Maybe it's a missing child or um, some sort of crime and they just can't get any leads on it. So they might call a psychic who's good at remote viewing. It is definitely a talent. And um, we all can innately do it, but some are more developed than others. You know, I've had um, what I call my real dreams every now and then, which is part of the remote viewing scheme of things. It's one aspect of it. And um, I'll give you an example. Um, Flight 232, United Airlines crashed um, many years ago today. I noticed that when I was cruising around on Facebook. And I was in Osaka, Japan on a layover when I had this real dream of an airplane that was flying around in a big circle and everyone was looking up at it, wondering what was going to happen. And when I landed and got home to Massachusetts the next day, turned on the TV and it was showing over and over on the news, United Flight 232 catapulting down the runway or the cornfield um, because it had crashed and it was flying in a big circle because it had lost its um, hydraulics. It had no rudder. And um, I had what I think was a premonition. Now the accident hadn't even happened, but I had a premonition. Another time in 1995, I think it was, um, I had a real dream of a building coming down in my, in my dream, it was very real. And I woke up, turned on the TV and in real time, it wasn't a, a video recording of something that had been happening previously. It was actually happening, happening that moment. The building in um, Oklahoma City was coming down and I had a premonition of that. Um, I had another real dream. I've had a, quite a few of them in my life. And I always know when it's a real dream. It's very, very um, vivid. It feels different. I mean, I've even met people that have passed over in my dreams, like I was really meeting them and talking to them. And I think that's possible because we live in a multidimensional universe where we don't really die. We just go to a different frequency. And when you're sleeping, you're going down into theta, alpha, um, and then down into delta, where you are actually operating in the spiritual dimension as well as the three-dimensional world. And you can see things because um, in the spiritual dimension, there is no time. Events have already happened. We can influence them by the way we think about things here in the three-dimensional world, but many times we can't change things that are coming down the road. They're already set in motion. 
certain things we can change, but there are other things, other events that cannot be changed. I found that out. Now, I had um, a series of dreams in 2001, and it was the winter of 2001, probably around February or March, months before 9-11. I was sleeping in my house in Westport with my then husband downstairs watching television, and I would go to bed. This happened three nights in a row. I had a series of dreams that were so God awful. Worst nightmares I have ever had in my life. People all over the planet were dying in agony. They couldn't escape it. It was so horrific. I would wake up and try to turn it off because I didn't want to see these images. And I would go downstairs and try to tell my then husband what was happening. He wasn't terribly interested, but I was crying. I was so upset. Three nights consecutively. I had these horrific nightmares. They were so bad that I actually kind of turned off the details so that my conscious mind wouldn't really remember, but it sort of haunted me for years now. Now, I spoke to a man who teaches remote viewing that I met because I'm an Udemy instructor. I have a course called Metaphysics Made Easy. And this particular man had a course in remote viewing. So, I spoke to him and I said, have you ever heard of anyone having a series of dreams like this? He said, actually, yes. There are people um, who have dreamed of this terrible devastation and um, they think it's going to be a kill shot from the sun. Something's going to come from the sun like a, a solar flash that will wipe out a lot of people. That was one way that remote viewers were interpreting it. So I thought, well, that sounds like, you know, a reasonable explanation. I hope it doesn't happen. I'll do everything I can to raise my consciousness to help avoid it because things can be turned around. But um, now I'm beginning to think kill shot could be some correlation there. Um, whatever, it was pretty, pretty horrible, but you know, you just have to be prepared in this three-dimensional world for anything to happen because you never know. We come here, we spend some time, we learn some lessons, and we're not here very long. So it's always good to be prepared. <laughs>